Hey there everyone, Mazrock here, and today I'm going to be going over tips and tricks for World of Warcraft PvP so you can not be terrible, plain and simple. Let's go! First things first, as of the recording of this video, we are still missing five followers for the Rhyme of the Frost main dice giveaway uh so when we hit 50 as long as it, uh the next DD stream that we hit 50 if we hit 50 during it will still be pushed until the next week i'll be giving uh the rhyme of the frost main dice set uh in the DD chat during the break so if you really really like those dice and like to win them give me a follow on twitch and uh we'll go from there so what inspired this video first now, I've been playing random battlegrounds in World of Warcraft PvP for a while. I really, really enjoy them when they're good. But the problem is, <clears throat> when they're not, they're terrible. And they're terrible because it, it it's not that you just that you don't win, but no one's doing anything. No one's doing anything of value to try and win. I'm okay with losing battlegrounds. It's fine. It's gonna happen. But losing because 8 out of 10 players not doing any of the objectives is very disheartening. It's not fun. And it makes for a total wipe, 3 captured flags to none, because no one's doing anything. So, tip number 1. Fight on nodes, not roads. Now this applies for things like Arathi Basin, Gilneas, where you have to... Uh, fight for the specific territories and hold them but as well as capture the flag uh so for example the uh warsong gulch focus down the enemy flag carrier go get the flag those are the objectives battlegrounds have objectives per contrary to some popular belief pvp battlegrounds are not massive gank fests they're not they have objectives and to win and gain contest uh to, to to win conquest you need to win it doesn't matter if you got 50 kills in a battleground if you your team couldn't cap one flag you still get the same one mark of honor if you get the steel lockbox or you know it it, it just it, it doesn't help so fight for territories and this is where i've i've fallen in guilty to this too you see a fight happening you want to go and help absolutely true but the problem is is they're fighting over nothing they're just fighting to fight they're fighting in a road they're just fighting in the middle of warsong gulch and nothing's getting accomplished no one's going for the flags no one's doing anything it's okay to not jump in let that fight die out because you might think oh, okay it's three three of us versus two of them you jump in to help finish it off, but they get a, a, a spawn and three of the reinforcements come in and all of a sudden this fight lasts another two minutes and it's still ongoing and nothing's happened. It's okay to not jump into a fight that is just being fought stupidly. Fight for uh, territories. Make sure the fights are where you need them to be. Uh, now, there is one exception to this. If you are defending a zone, it's okay to try and push the fight towards the road. Because if you, let's say you're at a Rathi Basin and you're defending farm, getting them close to the flags point is kind of counterintuitive. So you want to try and push them away, but be, be mindful. You don't want to go too far. Push them away. Keep pushing them back. It's not about necessarily killing them, but keeping them at bay. So big one there, fight on nodes, not roads huge keep to the objectives number two you can, i know battlegrounds can be full of trolls i know the chat can be a nightmare but use the chat to coordinate as best as you can so two and three are going to kind of go in well together so use chat to coordinate as best as you can don't be afraid to say hey who wants to come with me here uh call out incomings if you see their flag carrier that's not yet on the map Tell them which exit he's that flag carrier is leaving. That sort of coordination goes such a long way and people don't always realize it until it's missing. And calling out incomings, especially when you're on territory defense, is so incredibly massive. Because usually in battlegrounds, there'll be a few people that are defending the nodes. 
and there will be like a moving pack. Well, that moving pack doesn't know to get to you until you've already lost the objective if you don't call out that incoming. But he can they, they can bolster your defense and save that node if you simply call it out the moment you think you're being outgunned or anything. You know, and don't be afraid like like to ink like so what I'll do in the chat, I'll write ink LM if I'm at the lumber mill in Arathi Basin. I'll just hold it there. I'll exit the chat, but that, that stays there. And the moment I see it, I'll enter, I'll hit a number, and then I'll hit enter again. Then that way, the chat goes right through. It's instant and unprepared for a fight. The team knows what's going on. And you will, there will people that show up to help defend. Don't think you have to do it alone. You don't. And this one here is kind of like an extra little added. I'll do, I'll do this one at the end, actually. So number four don't be afraid to experiment different builds um so i like playing warlock in pvp a lot that's where kind of most of my fun from pvp gets from i really really enjoy it i was playing affliction in pvp when literally everybody else is playing destruction it's just what i like but i had to go through four or five different builds that are not icy veins recommended or skill cap recommended to where I could play comfortably and I could do a lot of good and I could and I could really work my talents towards towards winning the objective and doing good damage because it doesn't matter what the top DPS build is for PVP if you can't get the rotation down because there's too much chaos it's not the best one <laughs> the best talent the build the best build is the one that you're the best at so don't be afraid to experiment with different PvP talents, with different things like that. Uh, I've been doing that all this week with uh, with the Warlock because, of course, the the PvP talents just got changed. There's new builds with pre-patch, and one of the things that I did not think I'd like as much as I did, but amplify curse curses. Holy crap! On the Warlock, do I ever like that PvP talent? I took it as a filler because I really was just experimenting and I wasn't sure what I'd like. Now I th that button gets pressed so much it is absolutely unreal. I love it to death. So, but I would have never figured that out had I not experimented. Um, and so this is the last one. I'll do a bonus one. Um, don't wander around alone. If you think you can take an objective alone, make sure there's only one or two players there, but chances are if there's one or two players defending, there might also be a sneaky, a rogue or a feral that are, you know, shrouded themselves. So it's better to go to an objective that doesn't necess isn't necessarily pressing in a group than to go get the pressing objective alone. Because there's a very good chance that if it's the pressing objective, the enemy knows it's the pressing objective as well, and going in alone just means you are going to get wrecked. So try and stick with a group. Even if it isn't what you wanted to do originally, where you wanted to go, staying with the group just might be better, or you know, staying in packs of twos or threes, it will really, really increase your survivability. And will, you know, because the more that you guys are in one, the faster, the faster everything gets done, the, the more, more chaos happens, the more control effects you guys have, crowd control. The more, the better things are going to go. So bring and don't be afraid to bring in lots of crowd control. Warlocks fear can be an absolute nightmare against players, especially with affliction. Uh, as a good tip, you can dot fear, dot fear, dot fear, and maintain all of your dots pretty well while you're fearing and just making life miserable for people. So those are things that you can do. Bring in your stuns, bring in your your spell locks, bring in all of it, and make those key bindable as fast as you can. Make them quick and easily accessible because those are reactions. Uh, so when you when you see someone casting something or you know going on a big attack, stun stun them, spell lock them, do whatever you can. But you have a short window, usually anywhere from 1.2 to 1.7 seconds. But that is a very very fast time. So make sure those are kind of quick. So my last little bonus tip. And this one I see happen so much, and it's on territory maps. Gilnias, Arathi Basin, um, the one in Pandaland, um, the one with the five with the market in the middle. I can't remember the name of it right now. But, so, you're holding a territory. No one calls an incoming. It's just how it goes. Please do that. Uh, they lose the node, so farm gets taken, let's for, say, for example. I see one guy literally bolt the farm the moment that the notification comes up that farm is taken. Why? 
you are going in alone against a team that has just killed everybody else. By the time they've taken that node, there's no, there's none of your friends left. They're dead. Go for something else because everybody else else is already there. So go for another objective where they're not. It's a little bonus there. So I stream on Twitch every Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Now this today, as this video is dropping, there is no D, uh, there is no stream. Uh, I am finishing a very very long term D and D campaign where one of the players who I've absolutely been wanting to finish can finally make it due to illnesses. So I am going to be finishing that. That has been priority number one for a long time. So uh, there will be no stream this uh, tonight. Terribly sorry for that. Uh, this Sunday is the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden campaign, uh, episode three, uh, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, where it's a uh, live play Rhyme of the Frost Maiden campaign uh, with uh, some of my good friends. It has been an absolutely hilarious time good uh, so far. I need to introduce a little bit more horror, but we'll go from there. Um, and as of this video, like I said, there are five followers away. Uh, once we hit 50 on followers, I will be giving a, a, away the dice, the dice set that we had spoken of earlier in the video. So aside from that, uh, I hope these tips have been good for you guys and uh, in, in kind of getting a general sense of how to start learning how to PvP. If you're already rated, none of this is useful to you. Fully admit. This is a, a, a guide for people that want to think about getting into PvP and just need a little bit of framework. Um, so that, that, that this is really, really where this is intended and kind of helpful tips to kind of move forward from there. That, I will see you next week. Have yourselves a good day. Oh.